working on my cardio It's perfect with this audio You better call an audible Celebrate this victory win It's so applaudable I don't need the audience here Cause this is all I know Crossover fade away We living in a great time Better get your weight up Or get ate up at the baseline This'll be the jump off Started with a jump ball Throw the alley up off to my crew Now that's a duck ball Two points and one You about to foul out Free throw all net Everybody wow out I can let my game talk you were just a loud mouth We can get the ring with the whole team And then the crowd shout Hello again, Irish fans And welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball With Mike Bray I'm Jack Nolan Joined as always by the head coach of the Fighting Irish And coach, another very interesting week You did not get to play either of the opponents You were supposed to play But you did play another blue blood that you were not supposed to play until the end of the month, and you came out with a tough one-point loss at North Carolina. Well, these eventful weeks are only going to continue as far as cancelizations and rescheduling. I'm glad we were able to get a game in, and you're right. We played great against North Carolina, but not good enough to beat a good team on their court, and that's where we're really working to get better. Now, one of the biggest stories of the week will not impact the team until next year. I'm talking about the decision of last year's Ivy League Co-Player of the Year, Paul Atkinson, to graduate transfer to Notre Dame for the summer session after he graduates from Yale in the spring. What can you tell us about this 6'10 forward and how he can help you? Well, Jack, when we looked at our team and we said it's really a two-year team, when you look at the juniors that will come back, and we said if we could plug a transfer in for Juwan Durham with the returning guys around him, we have a chance, I think, to have a heck of a lot of fun. Paul Atkinson was the best one available, and we got him. So I am thrilled. He is a feel for the game, scoring, low post threat with great hands and feet, understands how to play, has Played a lot of basketball, never missed a game in three years. I love his durability. Yale undergrad, he will get his graduate degree in the Mendoza School like Nick Jogo is doing and Rex Fluger did. I am just thrilled to have this young man join what we have coming back. Atkinson averaged 17.6 points and 7.3 rebounds last season. As you know, the Ivy League is not competing this season, and he would have stayed at Yale if he could have, but they don't allow graduate students to play. And he said Notre Dame was by far the best fit for him. Now, when we come back, we will take you to Chapel Hill to break down all the highlights of Notre Dame's 66-65 loss to North Carolina. You're watching Inside Notre Dame Basketball, presented by the experts at TireRack.com. It's time now for our game breakdown, brought to you by our friends at Meyer. On short notice, you head out to Chapel Hill on Saturday to take on North Carolina. In the previous game against Virginia, your offense came out very cold against the Cavaliers. That was not the case at Carolina. Your guys hit five of their first seven shots, including four straight threes from four different players. You know, I, I thought we were really ready to play and compete. We turned it over a little bit early against their half-court pressure man-to-man, -man, but then we got into an offensive rhythm, and I thought we felt really good offensively pretty much the whole day. We didn't turn it over. The right people were getting shots. We were finding people. Um, so I was really excited about where we were on the offensive end. Now, one of the big bright spots of the early season so far, and maybe it's not getting as much attention as it should is the play of Nick Joga. He's really stepped up his game. He gave you 18 strong minutes in this one, including in that offensive stretch that I just talked about. Jogo hit a three and dished out two assists in his first three and a half minutes on the floor. Yeah, I'm really thrilled for him. He's a fifth year guy. He's hung in there with us. We've hung in there with him. And he is playing like a veteran guy in our system, very confidently, and is such a key guy. And as a captain, Jack, he's become a little bit of a surprise leader for me, what he's done and the voice that he's been for our team and our program. Mike, North Carolina is so big. You had to play bigger in this game. And 6'9 freshman Matt Zona came through for you in the game, 18 minutes of solid action during which he grabbed six rebounds, blocked a shot, and dished out an assist. 
Every time we've asked Matt Zona to deliver, starting with the Ohio State game here and throw him in, he delivers. He's physical, he's tough, he's confident. And, you know, I think we need to really keep developing him and using him because we're going to see more physicality on front lines in ACC games. He's a great example of you tell a guy, hey, when you get your opportunity, make the most of it. Matt Zona is a great model for that because he got some opportunities early, then we didn't play him for a while, then we threw him back in, he's not moped, he's just stayed ready and delivered. That's a maturity, that's more than freshman maturity right there. Now, in addition to being long, Carolina is 10 deep, and you had to counter depth-wise in this game. You've often said you have confidence in the abilities of walk-on Elijah Morgan to play against ACC competition when the game is on the line, and he rewarded that confidence with five solid minutes in this game, including getting to the free throw line and making both free throws to give you a four-point first half lead. You know, Jack, I've watched him go after Prentice Hub and TJ Gibbs and Rex Fluger and Cormac Ryan in practice for two years. And he has the utmost respect of his teammates. And I, I love the fact that we could get him in there because he's a fighter, he's a competitor, and he's not afraid. And I think we found something moving forward. He's a bit of a, like Zona, the combination of the two of them sparked you a little bit. You know, I've watched Elijah Morgan in practice give fits to Prentice Hub and TJ Gibbs and Cormac Ryan for two years. Obviously, Trey Wirtz is still injured, so there's an opening there for minutes. And he just totally took advantage of it, played poised, played calmly, makes his two free throws. Um, he's somebody I have to keep in mind. I like that we got everybody in the game in the first half in Chapel Hill and we got a feel for things and I want to continue to do that. But I have the utmost respect and his teammates have the utmost respect for him, Elijah that is, because he just is a warrior, a competitor. There's a toughness about him. We've had some square offs in practice where he and Cormac and, and all good stuff, all just because it's good competitive juice. I love what he brings to the table and I'm really, I'm really happy for him that he got a chance to play in a big game and deliver. You took a seven point lead when Dane Goodwin hit a deep three with 455 left in the first half, Carolina rally, and you took a one point lead into the locker room at halftime and you had to feel pretty good at this point felt great about where we were at, Jack. We were playing well. You know, we had them at 29 points. We had done the job uh, keeping them off the backboard, the offensive board in the first half. Certainly that wouldn't be the case in the second half. Yet, yet we had our chances. Well, you not only had your chances, you shot the ball well in the first half. You shot it even better in the second half, getting 50% of your shots from the floor. And normally that's enough to win. You know, we were going to have to score to escape them. When you play North Carolina, you know you're going to absorb offensive rebounds by them. Last year, we won at the buzzer. We gave up 19 offensive rebounds. The times we've beaten them, we've given up 15, but 21 offensive rebounds was a little too much for us to absorb. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this timeout. Now, Nate Leshesky had a game-high tying 25 points in the contest, including hitting a career-high 7 of 11 three-point attempts. But he also showed how far his game has come when he drove the lane and split 6'11 Dayron Sharp and 7'1 Walter Kessler for a pretty finger roll that gave you a 23-17 first half lead. You know, he's um, he's done a great job of getting to the basket. And now, as I've said, with his physicality and being stronger, I think he's more confident to finish in traffic with the strength gains that he made over the summer. You also have to move the ball if you're going to beat him. And you did. You had 10 assists on 15 field goals in the second half. Yeah, you know, we were in a great rhythm in the second half. What happens a lot of time, that are, their initial pressure when they're fresh, is really hard to deal with. They're harder. And then as they get a little more fatigued and we get a feel for it, we get into a better rhythm. And and that was certainly the case. And we were doing it on the offensive end. I I like what we did there. We couldn't do enough, which which has really been our team right now as we 
strive to be better. We couldn't get enough stops or defensive rebounds at key times to escape with a win. Now you came up with enough, almost enough big plays to win this. Right after the first time out of the second half, Matt Zona impacts the game again, blocking a layup attempt by 7-1 Carolina center Walker Kessler. He grabbed the rebound, and that play led to a Prentice Hub layup that gave you a five-point second half lead. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, again, Matt Zona continues to good, give us good energy. He's a fighter. He's the battler. I think we've got something we're really excited about, not only this season, but long term in our program. Prentice Hub was really good in this game, aggressively attacking the basket, especially in the second half, scoring all 14 of his points inside the arc, 10 of those points in the second half. I would make a similar comparison to Nate in that big, improvements in strength over the summer. And now as a junior, he can get to the basket more physically than he could his first two years. Hub also had three assists, and when he found Leshesky for a three with seven and a half minutes left, you again had a seven-point lead. Yeah, I mean, we're, we were flowing, we were feeling good. You know the run's coming. You know they're going to come after you. You're not going to win by seven in Chapel Hill. Can you hold them off? And, and we just couldn't quite do it. You're right, Carolina did make it a one possession game for the final five and a half minutes. And your guys still came up with a couple of big offensive plays down the stretch. One was a great pass by Jawan Durham to Nick Jogo for an easy layup that gave you a 63-62 lead with 155 left. You know, uh, one thing that, that Jawan does is he is a very unselfish passer from the post. And one thing that Nick Jogo does, he's a great cutter and they roommates found each other. We also, as you know, Jack, we missed some free throws. We've been leading the league in free throw percentage. We missed some free throws we usually make that you're gonna have to make on the road against a good team. One other play that Jawan Durham made that I wanna mention, you say he's very unselfish. He makes great passes. He also blocks shots. And the second play I want to mention is Durham's block on the defensive end that led to another driving basket by Hub that gave you a 66-65 lead with just 36 seconds left. Well, I thought he recovered from foul trouble early in the first half to come back and really do a good job for us and be active. And when he can block some shots and change some shots inside, it really helps our defense. You build your teams to be veteran. Carolina is very young, but Roy Williams knows the importance of having a little experience out there. And it was the most experienced player on the floor for the Tar Heels, Leaky Black, who banked home a driving basket with nine seconds left. Carolina holds on to win 66-65, and they defended you very well on that last possession. You know, I, I feel for our guys a little bit because I thought we rotated out and switched, and Nate Leshevsky was up, and Leaky Black hit a really tough shot off the backboard over a 6'11 guy. They did a good job on the last play of double-teaming Hub, but I like the fact that Cormac Ryan's coming with a head of steam and he's got a little bit of a body advantage. I think the Cormac Ryan, as he plays more games, would just go make that play next time. Having said that, Jawan Durham with a wide open 12 footer on the baseline, you know, that may be as good as it gets right there. I do think if you're gonna win, you gotta win it on that possession earlier, get a stop, get a rebound and get fouled to escape uh, Chapel Hill. Mike, thanks. When we come back, we will debut our Irish Intel segment for basketball here on the Mike Bray Show, presented by the experts at TireRack.com, the ultimate in contactless tire buying. It's time now for us to debut Irish Intel here on the Mike Bray Show. This is where we give control of the video to Coach Bray as we break down some of the best plays from the previous week of action. Our first play this week involves the first basket of the Notre Dame-North Carolina game. Well, great transition defense, you know, as we get back to kind of take away a numbers advantage break right there. Real good sense of urgency. And Cormac Ryan just does an unbelievable job, you know, coming back and saving the ball. Now, I'm not so sure he should save it under the other team's basket, but we dodge a bullet right there. And then what it does is it becomes a two-on-one on the other end, 
And a point guard being a point guard, he gets a layup for his teammate in a numbers advantage. And, you know, anytime you can get a layup against a good defense, it's a bit of a relief. Our next play occurs later in the first half. Nick Jogo attacks the lane, draws the defense, and finds Nate Leshesky for a wide open three. You know, here we are, and, and you can see their ball pressure is really, but that's just a great middle drive. Nick Jogo with a really good middle drive against pressure, and he finds Nate spacing up out here. And as we know today, Nate Leshevsky, when his feet are set, we all feel really good about that look. On down to the second half of the North Carolina game, Prentice Hub uses a ball screen to perfection to drive to the hoop and give you a one-point lead with 3.14 left. Well, Jack, the whole second half, Prentice Hub was controlling things and using the ball screen. He does a great job right here, turning the corner. And here's where his strength improvement has helped him as a junior. He physically can get to the lane. Great ball screen by Jawan Durham. Real good spacing by Cormac Ryan here in this ball side corner. But now this is the new Prentice Hub as a junior. I can get to the paint, I can go up, and I can physically finish. Huge play for us, and he did it the whole second half. In our final play this week, Jawan Durham shows off his tremendous passing ability with a perfect pass to a cutting Nick Jogo for a layup and a 63-62 lead with 155 left. Well, th this is this is just beautiful basketball. This is how we want to play, sharing the ball. We call it playing the right way. Cormac does a really good job keeping his dribble alive and dragging the big guy out. And we get a post-beating situation here. Prentice comes back and sees we've got Jawan in the post. And watch Nick Juggo up top. He has made a living off of that cut for the last five years. He has a feel for moving without the ball, and he has an unselfish teammate, and I may add, roommate, who found him <laughs> for that layup. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this timeout. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Basketball. It's time now for this week's Ask Coach Bray question presented by the experts at Tyrac.com. This week's question comes from Doug Varecki. Coach, this season feels a lot like the team this season Bonzi got injured. Are the guys capable of stepping up or is the team one scorer away from being really good? You know, I think we are capable of stepping up and that is a good comparison, really. You know, um, uh, we lost some men last year, uh, but I but I do believe this group can make progress finishing games. We're right there. We're really close. Again, I love how we're playing offensively. We're playing the right way. We're sharing the ball. Our numbers are good on that end of the floor. Our numbers on the defensive end and rebounding must improve. Coach Bray and I will return to wrap up this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this final timeout. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Basketball. Next up for the Irish, a Sunday night showdown on the road with a ranked Virginia Tech team that already has wins over Villanova, Clemson, and Miami. A confident Virginia Tech team, Jack. Very gifted offensively that loves to shoot the three-point shot. Great challenge for us. Boy, it'd be a great one to get in Blacksburg. And then you stay on the road in Virginia, you head to Charlottesville for a Wednesday night rematch with the Cavaliers. Well, they've been a thorn in our side and many people's sides in the ACC. The last two times in Charlottesville, we've played to the wire in regulation and to the wire in overtime. Maybe we're due. Folks, that will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. Coach and I will return next week to break down all the highlights of the Virginia Tech and Virginia games. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, and as always, go Irish.